Uh, what was I doing? I, light room, that's right. Okay, this is a source of light. We already solved this room. I just want to make sure. You, you gotta backtrack a little bit. Because we, we didn't know, or I didn't know, the mechanics of the dungeon yet when I did that. It startled me, even though I was kind of expecting it. So we get the mirror. There's nothing really in this room. There was the fire thing down there. There was that. That's kind of the big mystery here. And this is the loose end that I wanted to tie up. Because there's... There's something past that. But it's impossible to... S oh, wait. Oh. I don't think we're meant to get past there. We're meant to get this. A Gerudo Spear. And that's all that was back there. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna drop it and take uh, take the spear. Okay. Loose end tied up. I, I would also like to point out, I, and I don't think this is due to my inexperience, it feels like, to me, this dungeon is incredibly long. And I don't think that's because... I don't think that's because I've been tarrying. I think that's just straight up this dungeon is long, which I like. That's great. I, and this is already a, a massive step above anything that was in Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild felt like it was a, it was multiple, uh, it was multiple shrines duct taped together. And there was like very little cohesion between all of them. The objectives were very boring. The central mechanics were basically non-existent. You are angry, making me angry, so I'm gonna kill you. It's like you could fire back a little bit. Not good enough, though. I need to get into the habit. Uh, that's a 24 power. He had a Grudo bow. That's technically better. Okay, what are we doing now? We have light entering the room, but I actually think... We're supposed to move this. And... Redirect the light. I don't think that we're done with... Yeah. Maybe we are. Oh, no. Straight up. It solved itself. My hunch was correct. It, the, the, we're using the same tools for multiple purposes. And I... That's awesome. You see, uh, uh, honestly... I don't know why I'm stuttering. I'm, I sound like Morty. Uh, uh, geez, Rick. Uh, <clears throat> I've been... All too often, I felt like I'm in, like... Uh, review mode. And I don't like to have to do that. It just... I, I, I liked the days where I could simply enjoy a video game. And in fact, there's a moment in Skyward Sword, my very first Let's Play, where I talk about how often people like to pick something apart, and I like to, or make fun of it, and how much I like to get into the spirit of what the developers intended. And that... For this Let's Play, it's kind of died. I... <clears throat> Get on the switch. And I think it's just because of the direction the Let's... Or the, the series has... He Ooh, that's... That's fun. Playing Star Fox now? You okay? Oh, ah, ah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I recovered. I recovered. I didn't die. I didn't die. And before, before I hit the ground, I'm going to eat a seared steak and some dubious food and a roasted bass. Ah, this is that room. And I, I, I'm looking forward to the time when they respawn. No. Where? There you are. I'm looking forward to the time where I can have enough faith in the game to just be like, this is awesome. I really like this how do we solve it, instead of I wish they had done this. But it, it feels like we're getting back to that point. I'm, I'm starting to have faith in Zelda again. 
because I don't want, I don't think that every, every decision in Breath of the Wild was wrong. I just think many of them w missed the mark, and some of them changed things for the sake of it. Which, when you're designing something and trying to breathe new life into a franchise, change for the sake of it is justified and can be correct. But it's after that point that you have to look at what went right, what went wrong, and adapt to that. And that's what they're doing. They're like, okay, the... Maybe we do need dungeons. Maybe we do need a unique aesthetic. Maybe these things were correct. I went here, right? Okay, yeah, it's this room. And so they're they're keeping what was great about Breath of the Wild, and then also bringing back what didn't go right, which what didn't go right was some of the mechanics from other Zelda games or the franchise that were very solved, and bringing back some of that old formula, but just the best parts of it. Yeah, you can, you can burn up. That's right, I have a flame emitter shield, and I forgot about it. Give me your construct horn. Uh, what is that? Oh, it's a, it's a flame emitter spear. What? Okay. We can go up this way, or we can go through. Oh, I see, I see what we're doing. No enemies, no whammies, we're fine. And some of... <laughs> so, I, I think uh, the developers at one point talked about how... Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. They talked about how they didn't use, or they didn't reference other franchises when making Breath of the Wild Tears of the Kingdom, which is great for fostering creativity and not falling into archetypal tropes. Ah. But it's not good because sometimes you don't, you fail to learn the lessons that have been solved, you know, 20, it's like 10 years ago of the, I really expected that to break, of like time stopping when, oh, and that's gonna light that up and solve that. Of time stopping and healing completely and combat being bogged down by that. Skyward Sword solved that problem, but they didn't realize how much an unbounded, how that could cause issues with an unbounded inventory where, I mean, you can fill up your inventory so many times with all of your resources. Whereas in other Zelda games, you were capped, so using a bottle and pausing time made sense. It just stuff like that. Stuff like that where it's like, it's a growing pain that they have to figure out. And that problem technically is this still thing is going here. To be a problem. Nah, it's fine. I can walk into that. What are you talking about? Okay, I can't, I can't do that, but I can do this. Um, there, there are a couple other things. So, I, one of the biggest things... Just in case. One of the my biggest hobbies right now is designing dun Dungeons and Dragons. Not only am I completely redesigning 5th um, edition, but... just want to be careful here. Not only am I completely redesigning 5th edition, but I'm also making my own world. And that world is... Hey, the trap is disabled. Based off of... Uh, based off of Zelda. And so I'm designing... I'm designing an open world game and realizing some of the things and some of the reasons why Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild are the way they are, why there are only a couple of enemies in the game. Because just now. It's because it's incredibly difficult to scale difficulty properly when the player can go in any direction. You have to have Uh oh. Where am I falling? Whoa, where did I just go? I am here now. Okay. Uh I'm I'm safe. I think I'm safe, but I also jumped the gun. And Riju's fighting up there alone. 
But yeah, you, it's hard to scale difficulty properly when the player can go anywhere. And if you have a, a large bestiary, you either have to relegate them to... Riju, are you with me? You're not with me. Okay, so I gotta fight this guy. Oh! Hang on, Lee. That dealt a lot of damage. I'm okay, though. Kind of. Uh, I don't have an apple. I just have melon. Okay, let's, um... Come on. Fine. Switch to an actual weapon here. Switch to an actual shield. Whew. You gonna attack me? <laughs> oh, okay. And so, in, unless you want to have areas of the map that are kind of um, partitioned off, so that you can have, it's like, oh, there are redeads here. Oh, there are, uh, there are aerial foes here. You have to do this palette swap thing and have a few enemies. And it's just one of the hurdles that you have to get past. This game does it in an interesting way because now there are there are Gibdos, and Gibdos are incredibly weak in terms of how they hit, but they do a lot of damage. And there are point, and they're also they have an elemental um, immunity, so it, it's almost as though no matter what part of the game you're in. They're actually going to be just as difficult as they are if you're just starting out. Because of that elemental that elemental weakness. And it's just one of the, the hurdles that they had to get past. Uh, I think I need to... Aim this. Such that it hits that. But, then I need to... I can't recall that. Oh, but I can do that. Is that gonna break, though? I don't think it'll break just because they only gave me one of them. But, it could. So yeah, that's that's what I've, I've been doing. Gently, leave that there. <laughs> no need to solve the puzzle when you could just Solve the puzzle? Just just for proof of concept here. This is what they wanted me to do, right? Like, stick this in the wall? Ow. Yeah, that's what they wanted me to do. And that's good to know. But you don't need to do that to beat the puzzle. Okay, but before I leave here, though... I gotta watch this room. Make sure there's no, there are no secrets in here. Cause again, this is where I would hide one. Other than the weird runes, which I actually think are, yeah, those are a way to line up. I think we're fine. Yeah, so what I, I did, my solution to an open world game uh, needing to have progressively st stronger enemies to properly scale difficulty is you have areas of the map that are much more difficult than other areas, and you use these to direct the player, to push them into a path you want them to take. So you might have a, a, a region where it's like, hey, the enemies get really strong here, you should probably turn around. But you can come here. But I can also understand why the developers didn't want to go for that, because now you're kind of, you're kind of force-feeding the player into a path and kind of punishing them. Yeah, it just... <laughs> I, I highly encourage that if you like playing video games, you experience game design in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's by Dungeons & Dragons, whether that's actually getting involved with creating a game, which I know is very daunting and scary, or, or just playing a, a, a very uh, a creatively focused sandbox game, Minecraft, something like that. A game where you can kind of design your own world and a player experience because then you start to understand and empathize with designers and understand like why why things are the way they are why it is that there okay. are five Only enemies in breath of the wild it doesn't mean that you have to agree with it and there are definitely solutions to that but it means that you start to kind of understand and you're like okay 
So that, it, hel it helps you appreciate when great decisions are made. When something really good is designed and it makes a lot of sense and you can tell there's a lot of thought behind it. Okay, so that was the third battery. We have one more battery. I should probably be atten paying attention to the floor because now... What, wait, what did that open? Hold up. Snap. I was not paying attention. What did that actually do? Um... That didn't... Oh, I don't think it changed anything, actually. I think I'm just a little bit dense. I think I was talking and kind of lost train of thought. Okay, we went here. We went here. This is solved. And true to Breath of the Wild fashion, a great decision they made is the more you progress through the dungeon, the more complete the music gets, the more important you feel. Like you're on the cusp of something grand. Which I think is a mechanic that doesn't get enough credit, is music. Music is such a... a crazy thing in video games when you think about how a lot of times... Um, that aims down. That aims up. We just came from up. A lot of times, music, or actually, all the time, video games, movies, etc., all your favorite things are designed without volume, without, uh, without sound effects, without music, and that's added in later, which is kind of nuts when you think about it, because how many games are good because they're, they have good music that matches the vibe that the designers were going for? And how many games are bad because they don't have good music? It really makes you appreciate media in a new light because these people have to make this stuff without any of the stuff that gives it its soul. Uh, okay, so we're here. Are we needing to aim again? Let's let's check our map. Let's reference this. Did we? Okay, so this is that. We went here. We went here. I don't think we went to floor four. No, we did, we did, we did, because that's the, the spinny room. Let's activate this and just see what happens. Okay, that's what I thought. But maybe this power available 75%, as as we expected. Oh! No. Hmm. So that's the last battery. We know that. And we need to open that or get inside somehow. Wait, wait, wait. Look at the map, look at the map, look at the map. Wait, I'm, oh, I'm... Got it. Got it. We're there. Come on, Riju. We can solve this. You know what I find kind of nuts? Going through this dungeon, it's been a long time since I went through, like, an actual dungeon in a Zelda game. Uh, I mean, really, it was Wind Waker was the last, right. like, formulaic Zelda game I played. And... <clears throat> The thought that I, I started, what, in 2014? Almost 10 years ago, I've been playing Zelda games. I've been solving puzzles. And getting back into that mode... I mean, you can tell the past couple episodes that it's been weird for me. And it was only in probably, what, the last two that I kind of opened up. It, it's just... It, it's a mode you have to get into. And now I'm here. Now, now we beat... We're, I mean, we're about to beat this dungeon. And... I'm back in the saddle. And that's what this Let's Play has kind of been, I mean, it, it's in the description of the playlist, is it's about getting back in the saddle. 
And I'm, I'm starting to get there. Some of the old me is coming back. Read you. Mm. Aha! We've charged all of the batteries. Come on, Link. Let's check out the device. You don't need to tell me twice. I have a bunch of equipment. I have some attack food. Which I don't know if it's going to work. I don't know the, the <laughs> climate of the battlefield. What is... Link, I think the platform. this platform is about to move. Riju, um, you wouldn't happen to have, like, an ancestral, like, a fairy as your ancestor, would you? Because, like, some of the stuff you say is, um, <laughs> very on the nose. 